Hey, what's going on Guardians? TBL here, and Bungie has just concluded their massive live stream showing off the upcoming Destiny 2 expansion, Forsaken. It was a long live stream, and there was an absolute ton of stuff that was revealed in it. Like, way more stuff than I could ever hope to cover in one video. So this is going to be the first of several videos talking about some specific things that we got to see today. Now, Bungie started things off with a 9-minute Vidoc showing off quite a lot of new things coming in Forsaken. So we're going to be focusing mostly on that Vidoc and the new things that were introduced in it in this video. There is seriously so much to cover here and so much to be excited about, so we're just going to start at the beginning and work our way through that Vidoc, trying to hit every big thing that pops up in there. The Vidoc starts with several Bungie developers basically talking about how they came up with the idea of Forsaken, what they put into it. Basically that they took this, they wanted it to be every single thing that the community has been asking for for the past year or so. That basically, with this expansion, they wanted to go all out and pull out all the stops. And I have to say, we really get to see that as things move forward. It starts out with that forsaken teaser we got yesterday of our Guardian as well as Cade 6 dropping into an area that looks like it's inside of the Prison of Elders. They talk a bit about how they want this DLC to sort of have a western vibe with the story of revenge, and that... The story will start out with a prison break at the Prison of Elders. Cade has been filling this prison for the past couple of months with a lot of the biggest, baddest names in the solar system. And our story begins with those enemies attempting to break free. And from there we get to see some of the enemies we'll be taking on, including all the usuals, the Cabal, the Fallen, the Vex, but also a brand new faction of the Fallen called the Scorn. These are going to serve as the primary antagonists of the Forsaken DLC. They look super cool. They're like space pirates with lanterns and chains all over them. And then we're shown off the leaders of this new faction of enemies, the five barons leading the Scorn. Each of these five bosses is going to be unique. They have a different fighting style, and you'll fight them in a different styled encounter. The example that we get is an awesome looking sniper battle that we're going to be having against one of the barons. While another baron is a gigantic melee oriented character that you'll fight in a smaller arena. Each of these bosses looks super unique, and the fact that Bungie has focused on different encounter types for each of those bosses has got me really excited. But what's got me even more excited is what came next, and that is word about the incoming changes to the weapon system. From now on, when it comes to the weapon system in Destiny 2, the player, you are in control of how you play. No, they're not going back to the Destiny 1 system, they're going even beyond it. From now on, if you want to play with the classic D2 styled system of dual primaries and a heavy weapon, you can do that. If you want to run three power weapons or three special weapons, you can do that. They show an awesome example of a Guardian swapping from an energy hand cannon and then over to a sniper rifle in their secondary slot rather than in their power weapon slot. And I have to say, this is something a lot of players were waiting for, and it's exactly the kind of thing we wanted to see. I didn't really know what to expect when it came to weapon slot changes within Destiny 2. I had no idea what they were going to do, so I'm very excited to see that they've kind of blown away any expectation of like a fourth weapon slot or going back to D1 system by just saying, here. Play the way you want. They go on to state they made this decision because, again, they want to take the reins off of players and they want people to be fighting about what the optimal setup is. They want players to have their different ideas and opinions about how to tackle any specific encounter. And I have to say, this is a fantastic change. Probably one of the biggest bits of hype that was in this Vidoc. But it was followed by something just as hype. And that, of course, is the return of random rolls on legendary weapons. That's right, it is now confirmed in those exact words. Random rolls are returning to all of the legendary weapons in the game. That means you'll actually have a reason to grind out your 10th or 11th better devils. And they're also going to be changing up the mod system to give you a greater degree of control over those legendary weapons. They state that they've added an entirely new masterwork style system where you're kind of able to move your levels up over time when it comes to legendary weapons, giving you a bit more control over how those weapons play, handle, and get stronger. This is honestly a pretty exciting change. We knew that the weapon mod changes were going to be tied into the way perk randomization was going to happen, and I'm very excited to learn more about how exactly mods are going to be different in this upcoming summer DLC. After that, we get a look at some of the new supers that are being added into the game, and some of them look incredible. On the new side of things, we get some new hunter supers with like fire knives, 
It looks like there's going to be a new variant for Sunbreaker Titans with a gigantic hammer, very similar to the one we had as a relic back in the Rise of Iron, where you can kind of do like a spin to win and a big fire slam for Void Walker Warlocks. We're getting a new roaming super that has you teleporting all around, getting close to enemies, and then releasing a huge burst of void energy. Think of it as basically taking the Storm Trance Ionic Teleport, putting it on Void Walker, and then turning yourself into the Nova Bomb. Definitely a cool looking change for the Void Walkers out there. For Arc Strider, you guys got something brand new too. You've got this new defensive looking super where you're creating a shield in front of yourself, reflecting projectiles back from whence they came. And then finally for the new supers, we get to see a new Arc Super for the Warlocks that basically has you pulling a Kamehameha wave. You arch back and then you just fire this gigantic beam of energy and they go on to say that, yeah, it's, it, it's super broken, but it's super fun. And I love that sort of direction. I love the way these new supers look for all of the subclasses. They go on to talk a bit more about how subclass changes are going to work into the game. I do believe they say that there's going to be nine new supers added to the game. So that means we're going to probably have a bunch of new subclass trees to spice up the subclasses we've already got available within Destiny 2. And these all look super unique, very fun. The uh, the new Hunter with the throwing knives, looks like they might have some tracking on them. All of this stuff looks really, really cool. Very excited to learn more about these new subclass tree options and what the abilities in them are. We actually got to see an Arc Warlock, a Stormcaller utilizing Devour. So we know that there's gonna be some mixing and matching there between the subclass tree perks. Very excited to see what's going to go on with that. After that, we got a look at a brand new weapon class added into Destiny 2. Bows and arrows. That's right. You don't have to be a Night Stalker anymore to use a bow and arrow. It's going to be a brand new weapon class for you to take advantage of when Forsaken goes live. They go on to state there's going to be three types of bows within this DLC. A short range bow, a medium range bow, and a long range bow. And alongside looking really awesome, it looks like some of the arrows you fire from these things are going to have special effects. The one example we get is firing an arc arrow that lands behind an enemy, but then shoots an arc bolt at them. Really interesting to see a brand new weapon type being added into Destiny 2. And I gotta say, as a fan of bows and arrows in uh, most FPS video games, I'm super happy to see it added into Destiny. After that, we got to see some of the brand new game mode that Bungie has been hinting at within Destiny 2. It's titled Gambit, and it is a perfect mixture of PvE and PvP environments. The game mode works like this. You're going to have multiple teams basically spawning into their own areas, fighting enemies, and earning tokens. They utilize those tokens to charge up a machine. When you deposit those motes into this bank, it'll spawn a blocker on the enemy team's zone, which basically they'll have to defeat if they want to deposit their own tokens. And once one side has deposited enough crests into their bank, it'll summon a boss called a Primeval. The side that destroys their Primeval first wins that round. And that's the basic gist of the Gambit game mode. Now, there's also some PvP elements to this. One player from each side is going to be able to invade the other side's game space and attack those players in order to prevent them from depositing their crests. Meaning you'll not only have to keep your eyes out for the enemies whose crests you need to acquire, you'll also need to keep an eye on your back to make sure other players aren't coming over and trying to ruin your day. I gotta say, this is a really interesting looking game mode that I cannot wait to see more of at E3. And even Guardian Con, as Deej later went to confirm that they are gonna have this game mode available at the Tampa convention. Really looking forward to that. After that, we get to see some raid stuff. The new raid takes place in a new world environment called the Dreaming City. And that this raid is going to be taking place in the Awoken Homeland, and the raid itself is going to have more bosses than any other raid they've ever developed. And this new world space, this new in-game world space as they uh, describe it, looks massive. There's so many different parts to it, and they talk about how it's going to change as weeks go on. They say that there's going to be different divulging paths, plenty of secrets, and a world environment that's going to change based on how people are raiding through it. That the Dreaming City that you play at launch is going to be different from the Dreaming City you go into two weeks afterwards. 
this new raid environment it's looking like it's going to be a brand new world space that's going to incorporate way more than just the in-game raid they say that new activities and whatnot are going to be taking place there and i cannot wait to go diving into it for myself i loved the feeling of mystery that surrounded places like the dreadnought the vault of glass and i have been waiting for that sort of experience to come back into destiny and it looks like we might be getting it with the awoken homeland of the dreaming city now, after that, we get a bunch of looks at some really cool stuff, including a quick scene where we get to see a brand new exotic hand cannon on a hunter that looks suspiciously like the Thorn, as well as what might be the return of machine guns based on what that Titan is wielding. I just thought this scene was really interesting since the gun that the Titan is holding does indeed look kind of like a machine gun. It's got sort of the same barrel that Super Good Advice had, and the hand cannon that the hunter is using looks kind of like a taken version of the Thorn. And of course, we also get another great look at the new bows and arrows that we've got with the Warlock there. After that, the documentary goes on to explain the new collection system. Basically, you're going to be able to sort of catalog every single piece of armor, every weapon, every ship, every sparrow that you earn throughout the course of the game. Having this collection system will show you what weapons you've already earned, which ones you're missing, and where you can go to find them. And overall, it's just a really cool way to sort of keep track of the weapons and armor that you've been collecting through the game. Out of that, we're also getting the return of the Triumph system. They talked a bit about this in previous weeks. But this system is, of course, going to contain earnable accolades that will grant you additional lore and medals and all kinds of stuff like that. Think of it like the record books from back in Destiny 1. And then moving towards the end of the video documentary here, we get a couple of really quick scenes of some new stuff. What looks to be a Void Trace rifle being used by a Titan. We also get to see a new exotic Void Sword that seems like it shoots out projectiles when you use the heavy attack. And finally, the devs wrap things up with a message stating that they want Destiny to be the hobby game experience that players had back in Destiny 1. And given everything else we've seen in this video documentary, I'd say they're definitely on the right track for it. Alright, that is pretty much everything from start to finish that I could think of to cover for this video documentary. Again, it's super long, it's 9 minutes, we'll have a link to it down in the description box below. Go check it out, watch the whole thing in its entirety. And let us know what you think of all this stuff down in the comment section below. There's so much to talk about. This is not the end of our coverage. Oh lord, this is barely the beginning of it. We still have to discuss the live stream, all the things we learned from that, the price of all of this kind of stuff, the new ways seasons are being handled. There's so much information to pour over right now, so make sure you're staying tuned to the channel. We will be covering all of it in videos coming out soon. But alright, that is it for this one, Guardians. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you Guardians are as excited for Destiny 2 Forsaken as I am. It looks like we're finally getting things back on track. But that's it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I'm the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.